Greetings and salutations, folks. My name is Nick, and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. Where I'm clearly multitasking, but also um, about to go down into a cave where some kids have gone deeper into. There's some strange knocking deeper inside the cave that's not the children. So I suppose that's multiple reasons to go into the cave. One, because it may contain secrets. Two, because dangerous things are going around. Um, three, because those kids may be in said danger. Four, because this is the same mine where hundreds of children have died. So let's do this. Did I save my game? The answer is yes. Let's do this. I'll... We can get coffee at Winnie's once we're all out of here. My treat. You and Kanika exchange a glance as Stella ventures forward. I do like her optimism, though. Like, there's no guarantees that everything's gonna go A-OK. -okay. Also, I just realized that her belt is a bat. So Kanika is already way cooler than she already was. All right, let us venture deeper into the mine. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. B Becca, why are we doing this again? We could get in so much trouble for this. Uh, we're doing this because I'm not about to take life advice from a YouTuber and a dropout. Whoa, that is so uncalled for. I didn't drop out. I'm going back to vet school as soon as my family doesn't need me here. I I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. I like that River Runner video, video a lot. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? Um, so I think at this point I should l let you know that I would accept sponsors. Uh, if you're watching, uh, even though... I'm not even at the threshold of making any sort of ad sense. I mean, not yet, but I'm talks with meat rice, trademarked, and I make plenty from ads and donations. Dang, Stella, meat rice, that's a big deal. They're on like every big podcast. Oh wait, is, uh, is meat rice like the Ray-Bans of this uh, universe? The um... The Dollar Shave Club uh, loot box used to be... Like, I feel as though th there are certain products where they've become so synonymous with podcasts, with YouTubers, where you're like, okay, this is where the Audible sponsorship shows up. Thank you, thank you. It feels like a really s big step for the channel. Yikes, are you okay, Kanika? Yeah, it's fine. I just can't believe we have to deal with that Becca girl slandering us while we're sticking our necks out for her. God, I hate her. Normally I'd say she's just a kid, but wow, it... If... If doesn't have an uncanny, abil uncanny ability to go right for the jugular. Is that supposed to say... If she doesn't have an uncanny ability to go right for the jugular? You quietly press on. Another knock, closer, interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Oh my god, the teens were right. I did get jump scared. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? Yeah, it's not just you. I really don't like that knocking. Calm down, Alexis. It's just mine sounds. Did did you see that? Why are we still down here, Becca? N no, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. Becca, I swear I saw something. Shut up, there's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. 
Wow, that's a lot of conversation that I could talk about without progressing the story. Hmm. Are we sure the tunnel they went through is going to meet back up with us? I mean, probably because, like, the adults and the kids back in the day would have had to probably reconvene. I mean, we're still able to hear their voices. At the very least, we're still heading in the same direction. What do they see? Tommy knockers. Tommy knockers aren't real, but there's a reason people think they make those sounds. And uh, it's, no, it's, it's no, not a coincidence that the whole Tommy knocker myth is tied to mine collapses. Those poor kids. Is it too mean to call it karma? They've been making fun of us all night. At least now we'll probably be able to actually get them to leave. All right, we're getting closer. Let's keep moving. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. Becca, we need to leave. This isn't fun anymore. This is plenty fun. I bet you're only saying that because you want to hang out with your dorky crush. She's just an eighth grader. Becca, this isn't about Rosalina. I know you can hear that knocking. Well, it sure sounds like they're down there, all right. You want to wait up here, Neeks? The climb down looks nasty. And I don't think I can climb down and hold Gretchen. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. That ladder looks older than all of us combined. Good luck. All right, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Stay safe, Malice. You walk to the ladder and climb down. Hey, kids. Oh, great. The adults are here. Thanks, Alexis. Real nice. Wow, Keen Eye is giving me lots of choices. Uh, Alexis, you're much braver than you think you are. You don't need to let Becca kick you around. Becca, what are you doing? Do you actually have a death wish? Becca is needing to feel like you're better than other people so important to you that it is worth being buried alive for. Hmm. I would, I'm going to go with the last one. Alexis, you're so much braver than you think you are. You don't need to let Becca kick you around. Excuse you? No, excuse you, Becca. I don't want to be down here. I don't want to hang out with you. I just want to leave, and I'm going to do that right now. I... whatever. This isn't fun anymore. Fine, we'll leave. Wow. Good job. As Becca and Alexis move towards the ladder, the black chamber before you draws your focus. Finally, let's get the hell out of here. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions sound odd, distant. There is something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest, like the deep growl of a predator. You found, find yourself stepping toward the black chamber before you, compelled by some unnatural force. Hey, are you alright, Malice? Stella reaches for your shoulder, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Malice, Malice, are you all right? That is actually pretty awesome. Oh, thank God you're alive. It looked like you had a seizure or something and then you just conked out. She's okay, Kanika. Thank God. Okay, don't move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourself while you're still recovering from whatever that was. Kanika and I are gonna go get you help. 
We'll be back soon, I promise. Don't die on me, all right? You fade back out of consciousness as your command companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions. Your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues. Now magnitudes more intense than ever. Actually, this game has gotten this story has now gotten pretty intense now. You can't help but notice the timber struts around you trembling, as if they were being struck by invisible blows with each knock. They are all that stand between you and the many tons of rock over your head, and they suddenly seem terribly fragile. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of a rock fall. It's time to get out of here. Climb like hell. You push your body to move as quickly as it can, though you are slowed down by the cramped corridors and winding passageways of the mine. The knocking is deafening now, as if someone were trying to break through the walls with fists of iron. You continue to push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the pace. The entrance is so close. And there it is. Freedom. You manage to squeeze through the entrance just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. Ah, pro babysitter. Holy shit, you're okay, thank god. And everyone's accounted for. That was a surprisingly close call. We could have all died in there. What did you weirdos do? Everything was fine until you adults showed up. Becca, shut up. What did you just say to me? I said you should shut up. I'm sick of your two-faced bullshit. They didn't almost get us killed down there, you did. And now you're trying to pass it off on whoever else you can. It's just a cherry on top of this whole shit show of a friendship. I'm really not in a good headspace for this conversation. I could have died in there. Why are you doing this to me? No enough. No playing the victim this time. Being friends with Rosalina has made me realize how horrible you are to me. Friends aren't supposed to be mean to each other. Friends shouldn't be scared of each other. I never wanted to go into that stupid mine. It was your idea and we could have died. If these grown-ups hadn't shown up, we would have we could have been buried alive in that stupid little tunnel drinking stupid strawberry margaritas in a can. Screw all of you. Should we go after her? No, let her have her little tantrum. Did that feel good, Alexis, finally telling her off? Yeah, I guess. Ah, she's gonna be so mad at me. She probably won't talk to me for a week, maybe a month. Maybe the rest of her of my life. It's okay, Alexis, we don't need her. What do we do now? Uh, now I drive you two home. I've already texted your parents, and I'm sure they're worried sick about you. Rosalina and Alexis duck off to the side as a furious Tabitha approaches your group. I came as soon as I heard that crash. What the hell are you three doing here? I thought I gave you very specific instructions, Malice. Stay in one place while I finish my meeting. I was only gone for like an hour and here you are at the site of a mine collapse. Tabby, come on, it's not Malice's fault. Stella is right, if this is anyone's fault, it's yours. You have an abandoned mine on your property that was barely bo even boarded up. It was only a matter of time until something like this happened. You're lucky no one got hurt. I agree completely with Kanika and Stella. Um, like, Tabitha is lucky. Nobody got hurt. Really damn lucky. H how dare you? It's not like I put a big neon sign saying, Cool place for teens to hang. It's clearly not safe. Huh. Tab Tabitha's just another coal baron. Uh, why are we pointing fingers? Should have been boarded up. Let's not get our let our emotions get the best of us. Um. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with cool at everyone. Let's not let our emotions get the best of us. Not let our emotions get the best of us? Malice is right. We could tear each other up all night and it wouldn't do a thing but leave us with bruised egos. Thank you, Stella. Yeah, Malice is right. I'm going to get my car and then we're headed back to the estate, Malice. Tabitha storms off and you're afforded a quiet moment to catch up with Stella and Kanika. There was a there was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are you sure it wasn't just auto suggestion? We talked about that mine a lot today. I don't know, Neek. Smallus had like a seizure next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because she passed out or had a seizure doesn't mean it wasn't auto suggestion. Everything that happened down there centered around that main chamber where I saw that carving. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Oh, so you got a photo of it. That's good. Maybe you weren't entirely off base about the cult stuff you mentioned earlier today. But this thing felt old. I saw something down there, like the shadows of dead miners. They were right behind Stella just before you all left. Did you guys not see them? Whoa, I didn't see anything other than you in that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experienced, and I couldn't see anything down in the pit, but you might have just been primed to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile for some of the Tommyknocker stories. What if they're actually bona fide ghosts? Stella? We sure dodged a bullet tonight, didn't we? Yeah, thank God you noticed them sneaking off. You were incredibly d incredible down in the pit, too. I was pretty awesome. Uh, what happens now? It looks like Tabitha's back. I'd better drive these kids home. Come on, it's time to go. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Malice? I'd really rather you didn't. If you're gonna run around almost getting killed every night, keep my cousin out of it. Your cousin is an adult, Tabitha. She's free to get herself killed uh, on her own time. <laughs> is more or less what Kanika is saying now. Not while she's under my roof. Come on, let's go. As if to illustrate her point, Tabitha grabs your arm, dragging you towards the car. I'll text you when we're back. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk beyond the tree line. Sorry about today. Tabitha doesn't answer. You drop it. Tabitha's eyes remain fixated on the road. How are you holding up? I don't think you want me to answer that question. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? I don't want to talk about Stella, and it's none of your business anyway. You and Kanika really don't seem to get along. She pushes my buttons. I like her. Good for you, she doesn't like me. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence.
you once again cross the threshold into the estate. The musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with un its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Huh. Alright. Do I say the thing? Why did you invite me here? It seems like you hate me. It's like I've caused you nothing but grief since the moment I stepped foot in town. I don't hate you. I'm just trying to get through the week. The same as you should be doing. I just don't want you to get hurt. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs, her posture defeated. You head up to your room to turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw Mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Y'all, th these are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. That is a spooky picture. I saw them again, too. That is also a spooky picture. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. WTF, these things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mine collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off. Replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it wasn't if it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you see the shadowy figures that gathered behind Stella in the mines. Your thoughts are drawn to the carving on the wall and to and to and the visions it imparted upon you? And to the visions it imparted upon you. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Kete! Just the cat. It's always just the cat. But clearly, that this is this is a good omen. It is always good when the, the house Kite uh, honors you with their presence. It's nice to see another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. This also makes me wonder if the cat has a little bit of a more, a bigger figure, and that's one of the things that I regret in regards to my character creation, that I didn't choose talk to animals. Because you can choose a character who can talk to animals and the ability to, I think, to do like mythic related stuff. And I think those two options would have been more interesting. But I chose Keen Eye and Street Smart because I felt that I wanted to play that character. Wasn't there a room in this house that was covered in locks? That was kind of hinted at the towards the end of the previous episode?
This is the epi end of episode 2. Episode 3 is currently slated for late 2021, early 2022. We'll see, be sure to update when we have a firmer release date. Alright, let's save our game here. Alright, so far so good. It'll be interesting to see where this goes. Obviously, for now, we will simply have to wait for the rest of the video game to be developed. In the meantime, though, got any suggestions for something to play next? Leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a good night. Ah, you're welcome.